I'm Professor Angelo Antonini. Uh, I'm the head of the Parkinson and Movement Disorder Clinic at the University Hospital in Padua, Italy. I will discuss uh, the use of levodopa, uh, the early versus late use and the clinical consequences of uh, uh, delaying uh, the use of levodopa. I will also discuss uh, how treatment with levodopa can be optimized in order to accomplish uh, much more stable response and long-lasting benefit. So levodopa uh, is uh, the best uh, treatment that we can provide to our Parkinson patients. It's a large neutral amino acid and it is uh, uh, rapidly absorbed once it gets into the digenum. It is transported uh, uh, in the blood to the brain where it is transformed to uh, dopamine. The uh, levodopa use uh, uh, is very effective, but uh, when it was introduced many years ago, uh, there was uh, some concern about the possibility that it might uh, cause uh, some um, adverse events. In particular, it was thought that it might lead to the development of motor complication. Uh, these days, uh, we know that uh, uh, after uh, more than 40 years of using levodopa in the clinic, uh, we know that levodopa is safe, is uh, efficacious, uh, and it can provide the best control of motor symptoms. So the uh, red shortening uh, uh, in the benefit of levodopa we have experienced in the past is primarily related uh, to the uh, progressive loss of dopamine nerve terminals in the brain. And uh, you can actually uh, adjust the dose of your uh, levodopa tablets and optimize uh, the treatment of levodopa to uh, control the, uh, minimize the risk of motor complications. The uh, early days of levodopa, uh, were, well, the, at that time, it was quite different. People thought that uh, levodopa could be used at any dosage and they were not using it correctly. In fact, uh, the levodopa by itself is not sufficient to determine an improvement. Later, it was associated with an enzyme blocker, which could be carbidopa or benzerazide. And uh, uh, the early adverse events that people were experiencing were primarily related to the peripheral uh, uh, gastrointestinal system, so nausea, vomiting, and they are completely almost abolished uh, these days uh, once you combine uh, uh, levodopa with uh, dopa decarboxylase inhib inhibitor. I will now discuss the timing of levodopa use and how it can be combined with other medications in order to optimize uh, its efficacy uh, and uh, make uh, its benefit more long-lasting. One of the key questions uh, regarding levodopa therapy uh, has been uh, if it can modify the progression of the disease. Uh, there are uh, uh, a lot of articles addressing this concern and indeed uh, uh, this has been long debated. The reason for this has been uh, that uh, levodopa when it was introduced to the market uh, it didn't require uh, any uh, clinic, formal clinical trial for its registration because its efficacy was so large and its benefit uh, was so evident that at that time, in the 60s, the authorities felt there was no need to do a formal clinical trial. But uh, nowadays, recently, uh, the situation has changed and uh, two clinical trials have been uh, carried out in the last 10 years to demonstrate uh, if, uh, the efficacy of levodopa in a double-blind environment and also to look uh, at the uh, consequence uh, of utilizing levodopa at the different doses. And finally, also to address uh, the question if levodopa can uh, modify the progression of the disease. So one study is called the ALDOPA study. And it was a study where uh, patients, uh, people with Parkinson were randomized to receive either ALDOPA or placebo uh, for a period of nine months. And the doses of levodopa was different. One arm was treated with 150 milligram a day, uh, another one, so 50 milligram TID, another arm with 100 milligram TID, and the third arm with 200 milligram TID. The uh, 
period of washout that uh, it was introduced at the end would have served to uh, the objective of assessing uh, the status of the patient uh, after nine months of therapy. Unfortunately, at that time, uh, the planned washout period was relatively short, uh, and also patients were getting worse after withdrawing levodopa uh, for a few days. So we were not able really to accomplish uh, uh, that objective, and patients had to return to levodopa therapy. Uh, immediately uh, and the observation period after withdrawal levodopa was uh, insufficient to determine if levodopa would have uh, been able to shorten, uh, modify the, uh, uh, the, the changes uh, in disease progression in Parkinson disease. Another study, much more recent study, has been uh, published uh, and this study uh, utilized a two different strategies. So the, the levodopa was implemented in one arm early and in another arm uh, a bit later. So the arm that started later had a delay uh, in the use of uh, levodopa of about 40 weeks. That way uh, it was possible to see if a late start with levodopa would have had any effect uh, on the uh, response to medications and also uh, on the motor changes uh, that were uh, assessed, evaluated in people with Parkinson utilizing the UPDRS motor scale. Interestingly, in the LEAP study, uh, both arms, those who started the Vodopa early and those who had a delay uh, of about 40 weeks, uh, showed a similar level of improvement and at the end of the observation period had uh, both uh, the same level of clinical benefit. The conclusion of uh, uh, both studies is uh, really that the uh, levodopa can be safely introduced early, particularly the LEAP study suggests that there is no reason to delay the utilization of levodopa, uh, and using levodopa early at an appropriate dose, like in the L-DOPA study, you can provide a very good motor benefit, improve quality of life and also uh, uh, minimize the model disability that is associated with Parkinson's disease. Interestingly, uh, the FDA in the United States, uh, based uh, on the use of levodopa and also uh, based on the evidence that we have been collecting clinically, clearly states that uh, uh, the fixed combination medicine uh, must enhance its efficacy in terms of uh, levodopa therapy. And this is because uh, uh, the uh, benefit uh, from uh, uh, the utilization uh, of uh, a, an enzyme, an additional enzyme inhibitor like entacapone early uh, led to an additional improvement in uh, mobility expressed by the DUPRS motor score and uh, this difference uh, was uh, clinically significant and it was most importantly preserved throughout the 39 week period. So in this uh, additional study, uh, the uh, combination of levodopa with carbidopa uh, was uh, included an additional enzyme inhibitor. This enzyme blocked the catecholomethyltransferase in the liver improving the availability of peripheral levodopa and making it its efficacy uh, much more sustained and much longer uh, compared with the uh, levodopa-carbinopa traditional combination. The dual inhibition of both enzymes, dopa decarboxylase and catechol or methyl transferase has uh, the potential to uh, almost uh, completely block the peripheral clearance of levodopa, enhancing its availability, also in conditions where uh, levodopa, maybe for uh, uh, gastrointestinal reasons, is poorly absorbed. And uh, the symptomatic benefit uh, at this point uh, becomes uh, much larger and, uh, most importantly, uh, the much more predictable because uh, the small fluctuations uh, that we see frequently in our patients as a consequence of insufficient absorption, insufficient plasma concentration, can be adequately corrected uh, by the use of an additional enzyme which blocks the catecholomethyltransferase. 
In terms of safety, uh, the study uh, of a triple combination levodopa carbidopa catecholometry transferase inhibitor didn't really show uh, any difference. So it is uh, really safe to use uh, a blocker of COMT for a very long time in people with Parkinson uh, to maximize levodopa uh, benefit. We have been facing, uh, and uh, during these years of use of levodopa, with another challenge. In particular, the perception was that uh, if you use, if you delay the use of levodopa, uh, you could uh, uh, modify also uh, somehow the uh, occurrence uh, of uh, motor fluctuations and dyskinesias. We now know that. Uh, this is probably not a serious problem. Uh, and indeed, uh, by delaying the use of levodopa, we are not providing any benefit to our patients. Actually, we may them, uh, prevent them from experiencing the best period of response to levodopa, which is uh, the initial phase, which we call the honeymoon phase. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, studies have shown that uh, if people who have taken levodopa late, a few years after the onset of disease, have quickly started developing motor fluctuations. And these motor fluctuations were similar in terms of severity to those who had started levodopa much earlier. So the delay in use of levodopa doesn't really modify uh, the risk to develop motor fluctuations and also dyskinesias. There are various factors that are driving the onset of motor fluctuations and dyskinesias, uh, including uh, the severity uh, of dopaminergic dopa, um, cell loss in the brain, and the loss of uh, dopamine cells and the loss of uh, dopamine nerve terminals in the striatum. This seems to be one of the main drivers in, uh, the determining, in determining the onset of motor complications. So, the take-home message here it has been really to try to provide the maximum benefit to patients utilizing levodopa early at an appropriate dose and controlling, uh, uh, managing uh, the uh, absorption and the uh, peripheral availability, possibly by combining early uh, a second enzyme inhibitor uh, which would block the catecholomethyl transferase in the liver. Irrespective of the initial uh, therapeutic strategy, people with Parkinson, after a few years, experience fluctuations in the clinical state, which are expressed by progressive shortening in the duration of benefit of individual doses of levodopa. So these patients uh, are experiencing a phenomena which we call wearing off, and this wearing off uh, results in the appearance of motor disability, which might include slowness, reappearance of tremor, or occurrence of gait and balance problems that are related to the uh, reduced uh, dopaminergic uh, stimulation in the brain. Now, the best strategy that we can implement at this point uh, is uh, really trying to extend uh, the effect of levodopa uh, and the uh, use of uh, enzyme blockers can help us uh, in accomplishing this objective. We have uh, several therapeutic options. Uh, the main one would be to block uh, the uh, liver catecholomethyltransferase, which is responsible of the majority of the levodopa uh, clearance uh, at the first uh, blood uh, passage through the liver after the absorption. A second option might be uh, targeting the monoamine oxidase enzyme, which is located in the brain, and it is responsible for dopamine uh, elimination, clearance from the brain. But in order to have uh, a, a sufficient uh, efficacy, this strategy with MAOB must rely on a good peripheral levodopa availability. So conceptually, uh, it is probably more logic to start increasing the peripheral concentration by using a CMT inhibitor and then at a second step maybe consider MAOB inhibition
to uh, further extend uh, the effect of dopamine which has been produced by the uh, uh, higher peripheral levodopa uh, bevel ability. Finally, the uh, third strategy which I've been using uh, for many years now, it is uh, combining uh, levodopa therapy with a dopamine agonist. Dopamine agonists are molecules which uh, have a similar uh, affinity to dopamine receptors as uh, dopamine, but uh, they don't bind uh, as well as dopamine, uh, which is the original neurotransmitter, to the receptors. They have different affinity profiles and uh, uh, they have been used in the past uh, early in order to minimize uh, the use of levodopa and provide in a combination therapeutic strategy the uh, uh, optimization of the efficacy at the dopaminergic system and uh, uh, possibly also reduce the risk of motor complications, particularly dyskinesias. But the delayed rate of dyskinesias uh, observed in, a combina in the combination therapy was uh, primarily related uh, to the fact that uh, uh, levodopa dose uh, was uh, kept below uh, the 4 or 500 milligram a day. So we now know that dopamine agonists can still be used, but they have uh, some adverse events, and so these adverse events regard primarily uh, the risk to develop uh, behavioral problems like impulse control, uh, or to have leg edema, or to experience nausea at the beginning when they are introduced, or an aggravation of postural hypotension. So not every patient can tolerate a dopamine agonist. In addition, we know also that these adverse events are dose dependent. So if you increase the dose of dopamine agonist above a certain threshold, very likely patients might start experiencing these uh, medical problems. So uh, the use of dopamine agonist is still valid, but the dose of dopamine agonist to be used early in the disease uh, should uh, be uh, the least effective dose and they should be used uh, early in combination with levodopa. One of the challenges uh, uh, in uh, optimizing levodopa delivery uh, in the advanced phase of the disease is uh, uh, tackling uh, problems with gastric emptying. The stomach uh, uh, requires some time uh, to release food and similarly, uh, if you take your tablet in the uh, late in the morning or maybe after a meal uh, when the stomach is not emptying, that levodopa tablet will not be released immediately. So the levodopa available uh, uh, in that tablet will not be uh, reaching the intestine in uh, quick enough and patients might experience delayed onset of benefit. In addition, uh, this intestinal absorption could be a challenge in some cases uh, due to uh, changes in the local microbiota, which is uh, the, the bacteria which you can find uh, in the small intestine. This microbiota is very important uh, in making the uh, absorption of large neutral amino acid like levodopa effective. And finally, uh, the additional hurdles that levodopa must pass in order to get into the brain regard the, the uh, going through the blood-brain barrier, getting to the neurons and be transferred to dopamine. This conversion to dopamine could be problematic uh, in the, in the uh, late phase of the disease, primarily because the number of dopamine terminals declines and there isn't that much enzyme available for its conversion. All these factors uh, tend to make the response to traditional levodopa tablets less effective and less predictable. So it is very important uh, that when you start levodopa therapy with three doses a day uh, and you need to uh, uh, consider the fact that peripheral plasma levels uh, will not be sufficient uh, to deliver a levodopa constantly to the brain and make uh, the dopamine production uh, more continuous. To this end, uh, we uh, need to apply different uh, therapeutic strategies. We have mentioned about the use uh, of dopamine agonists and uh, uh, also about the use of enzyme blockers.
And I think it is important to go back about the opportunities that we have uh, of blocking the catecholometrin transferase. Uh, because, uh, of course, uh, the uh, blockage of, of this enzyme so far uh, has been quite cumbersome because you need to, you had to uh, change the, uh, the pill, uh, the levodopa tablet, utilizing a different uh, combination. And this has uh, made uh, the uh, implementation of this therapeutic strategy a bit limited. Nowadays, we have the opportunity to use uh, an enzyme blocker which can be taken once a day in the evening, after meal, before bedtime, and it is effective for 24 hours. Opicapone, which is a new CUNT inhibitor, uh, has been introduced to the market uh, a few years ago now, and it is already available in the largest uh, countries in Europe. This product uh, can be uh, safely added uh, to the current levodopa regimen, uh, with uh, taken once a day, and uh, the efficacy uh, uh, is uh, uh, quite remarkable because uh, it will prolong the uh, bioavailability of levodopa uh, to the point that in some patients uh, they experience uh, uh, no wearing off uh, anymore. So the absence of wearing off uh, resembles the results that we have been obtaining in advanced Parkinson's disease using continuous uh, jejunal levodopa infusion. Uh, similar to the continuous levodopa jejunal infusion, here, thanks to the introduction uh, of uh, a very potent and effective uh, CMT inhibitor, you, we can have uh, much smoother plasma levels uh, and more predictable response to medications. This, uh, of course, uh, doesn't mean that patients have to uh, uh, not pay attention to the time of intake of levodopa. They should still consider timing uh, of intake of levodopa important, possibly before a meal or minimize uh, during the day the use of uh, uh, animal proteins. But uh, the uh, utilization of uh, uh, a, a CMT inhibitor in the evening really allows uh, people who are respecting those very simple rules to have a much smoother response a more constant benefit uh, throughout the day, which results in an improvement in their quality of life and their functional independence. Levodopa therapy is still the most effective strategy uh, we have to control motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. Levodopa has been available now for several decades. We know it's very potent. It can reverse uh, most uh, motor disability in people with Parkinson. However, we have been debating uh, for many years uh, if it should be used early or late. And the uh, question came because uh, people who had initially uh, started levodopa in the 60s, they had also experienced uh, motor complications, uh, fluctuations in their clinical state and dyskinesias. Some two, three studies uh, that were published uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years uh, have really highlighted uh, uh, how uh, the use of levodopa and its efficacy uh, is uh, important uh, and uh, uh, it is maintained uh, even if you start it early. The most important uh, uh, take home message is uh, that levodopa should be started uh, at an appropriate dose uh, and possibly a lot of attention should be paid uh, to the time of intake of the tablets uh, and also uh, then as soon as uh, people with Parkinson start experiencing changes in their clinical state, uh, a combination with uh, a, a peripheral enzyme blocker uh, acting on the CMT catecholometry transferase uh, should be considered. We now have the opportunity to use Opicapone, which is a very effective and safely uh, uh, used uh, CNT inhibitor now available for many years, a few years now in many countries in Europe. So uh, by adding one tablet before bedtime, we can really optimize op levodopa delivery and uh, make uh, the uh, levodopa peripheral plasma levels throughout the day much smoother, which results uh, in clinical benefit, uh, not only from the motor aspects, but also for quality of life and functional independence of the patients.